Good morning, everyone. This is Jennifer Lasanti, the Director of Sales at Beer and Purvis. I want to thank you very much for joining us today. And wanted to let you know a couple of housekeeping items before we get going. Uh, everyone is on mute, but we would love questions throughout their presentation. Just type them into the chat box along the way. Uh, Stacy Reader, the Reader, the Director of Marketing at BMP, is joining me as well today. So she might stop us throughout the presentation if we're getting a lot of questions on one topic. And then, of course, we will, we will be sending this presentation out to everyone afterwards. So again, thank you very much for joining. We're going to go ahead and get going. All right, the agenda for today, we will do a quick overview of some information just on the 1 to 100 basic information before we jump into the composite rate options. So we'll cover the new definition of small group, including full-time equivalents, plan and network information you need to take into consideration, underwriting for small group, then ACA and composite rate options, We'll touch base on renewals, commissions, meeting preparation, and the BMP resources that we can provide. So starting with the basics, just want to do a quick review and remind everyone that we always had AB 1672 that in California defined small group of 2 to 50. And the big difference that we're facing now is the definition prior to January was based on eligible employees, and that is what's the change in addition to the group size. You can always base that number of eligibles on the previous calendar quarter or year. So if the group grew or shrunk, you could decide which uh, number you wanted to use and apply in that market segment. And then for small group, you always had to provide a DE9C and or payroll um, if the group was new or if there are new hires in the group. So if you look on the right there, you'll see that beginning January 2016, the definition in California is 1 to 100. Now, I believe California is just one of four states that kept the definition of small group 1 to 100. I have not heard that there's much movement in California to go back to 50 lives, and that is because we have the, the state exchange that really wants it to be 1 to 100. In addition to the number that defines small group of 100 lives, what you need to understand is that we no longer go by eligible employees when determining a group size. You actually count all the employees, including full-time equivalents. Now, the law, SB 125, does state we can still use calendar, quarter, or year. One carrier is uh, looking into that because they thought it was just year only, so we'll see if you know what their decision is when it's all said and done but we still do need DE9Cs, so we'll talk about it, not for all carriers, but for some carriers, if you're writing a group of 80 lives this year, we will need a DE9C for that group, unlike what you did last year when they were still in the large group segment. So the carrier position on the definition, you know, we always say that the carriers read the same information and then have you know, five to six different uh, interpretations of the legislation, as well as some system issues. They've all, for the most part, come down to the same agreement. So you'll see most carriers, or actually all carriers, do say that you look at the prior year to determine the group size. So right now, if you're trying to write a group for June of 2016, you're going to see how large that group was for 50% of 2015, or for all carriers except for Anthem, you could use the previous quarter. So if that group, group did grow in the first quarter of 2016, and you're writing the group for June, you could write them in the 100 mark segment because they were, say, 80 lives for 50% in 2015, but now they're at 110 full-time equivalents. You could write that group in large group, not small group, even though currently they have, you know, 110 eligibles. So with the employer choice, what we're meaning there is can you use the quarter or year definition? We have with Anthem, no, just because they're not acknowledging that you could use quarter, but I think that might change when they look into it a little further. But all the other carriers state you could use the definition of either 50% of the previous quarter or year. Now, the DE9C is changing. It's kind of a moving target right now, and it's a good thing that some of the carriers are stating for certain group size, even in small group, they won't require a DE9C. So if you look at it, for Aetna, the small groups under five, yes, you will. But for Aetna, group six or more, they don't. They just have a form that the employer says that, yes, we're between one to 100 full-time equivalents, and there's no documentation needed at all, similar to what large group has always been. With Anthem, this is brand new for them. They, too, have a form, and whatever the group says on that form is what they're going to view as valid. However, for groups 1 to 5, they will need a DE9C, but right now, 
for Group 6 Plus, they're stating they will accept a carrier bill. It is a little tighter than some of the other carriers when they've done these rules before, because if anyone that you're enrolling or waiving is not on that carrier bill, and of course most likely you waivers aren't because they probably waived the previous carrier's will as well, you will need a payroll for those employees. And we'll see if they get more flexible on that once they've seen kind of how the other carriers do handle that as well. They'll get more comfortable. With California Choice, um, they and HealthNet will require the DE9C for all size groups at this point in time. So your 1 to 100 full-time equivalents groups with CalChoice and HealthNet will need to submit a DE9C and be reconciled. So that 80 Life group with CalChoice and HealthNet will submit a DE9C. With United Healthcare, they're more like Aetna and United, I'm sorry, Aetna and Anthem, where for a group of 10 or more, it's just a form. You don't have to provide DE9C or payroll with United. So the definition of in California was based on SB 125, and you'll see when it's all said and done that the new definition of small group is based on how you count per pay or play, the full-time equivalent calculation. So we're just going to give you a quick information real quick. Um, as a reminder, per pair play, you count all the full-time employees, just the number of bodies that work 30 hours a week or more. For employees that work less than 30, you count the hours on a monthly basis, and one way or the other, you always include those seasonal employees. Now, you might end up subtracting them out when it's all said and done, but initially you keep them in. So here's just a quick visual. On the left, you count the number of employees you have that work 30 hours a week or more, Consistently on section number two, you would add up all the hours for anyone working less than 30. There is a cap of 120 hours per month for those hours for those full-time equivalents, and you divide it by 120, and that's where you're getting these equivalent counts. You add number one plus number two to get number three on a monthly basis, and then you would see what you average out for the 12 months. And here's a kind of a filled out version of that, so you get a, a better feel for it. So this poor group, unfortunately, ends up being 99 lives, full-time equivalents, so they would be in the small group market. We talked about whether you could do calendar quarter or year. Everyone will allow either except for Anthem at this point in time. But you do want to think it through when you're filling out all these forms. So one, you know, again, a group can grow or shrink depending on the size of the year, time of the year. Four considerations, though, before choosing. All the carriers are sending out these attestation forms, and the group is what it is, but um, when that's filled out, that's what that carrier is going to take as the group size. If you say you have 101 full-time equivalents, but you have very few medical eligible, which is very common in, say, a restaurant, you can have 110 full-time equivalents by that time you add up all those staff employees. However, there's only four 40 medical eligible. Well, all the large group carriers are going to say, yes, that group qualifies in the large group market. Oh, you only have 40? Well, we're not going to want that group. So there's no um, restrictions on what they can charge you. So they're going to give you very uncompetitive rates. At that point in time, you can't turn back to the small group segment within that carrier and say, oh, we're small group now because you've got very unattractive rates in the large group segments. So this has just been coming up a lot, so we wanted to cover it quickly. All those forms are going out. If the group has over 101 full-time equivalents, when it's all said and done, they are a large group. However, if they have very few medical eligible, they might get stuck. Another situation we're running into is if you're upside down with Kaiser in the large group segment. There's not a lot of options like there are more in the small group world now per ACA. Quick reminder, I think everyone understands essential health benefits, but when the group becomes a small group from 1 to 100 full-time equivalents, these are the essential health benefits they get. Um, nothing too drastic in the state of California going from large group to small group. You know, large groups always had mental health and substance abuse, so they continue to keep that in small group, et cetera. The, really, the biggest difference is the fact that when you become a small group, you get the lovely pediatric dental and vision services for your the kids. Now, there are limits on out-of-pocket maximums per ACA, and the irony of that is all the plan designs since January 2014 started having higher, higher maximums. Now, do note that all costs, all covered costs, do accrue to the out-of-pocket max now, which means your deductible, your RX costs, everything that's a covered benefit will accrue to the out-of-pocket maximum. So it's 
faster to get to the out-of-pocket maximum than back in the day, but they are higher probably than their current large group plan. And then in small group, all the carriers are bound to these metallic plan levels, so there's a lot less creativity in the small group world, and you'll see um, you know, a lot of the carriers don't have a lot of plan design options. With network changes, we have this in here specific with Anthem, and that's because in Northern California, Anthem small group HMO has never had the dominant carrier Sutter in their network. So if you currently have a group with Anthem large group, and they have HMO, and typically about 40% of mid-market groups are on the HMO plan design, when they move to small group 1 to 100, they would be losing their providers if they use Sutter, including Palo Alto Medical Foundation. Now, I do have some good news. It is not official yet, but it does look like Anthem, for the first time ever, will be rolling Sutter, including Palo Alto Medical Foundation, into the Anthem small group HMO. Again, that's not official. They're hoping to announce that for July so that when these mid-market groups come up to renewal in December and January of this year, or next year, rather, they would have the providers that they're used to having with Anthem large group. Quick reminder, this is a sample of a group that we looked at when you had an HMO mid-market carrier on composite rates. They had a premium of $569. When they moved to the small group PPO plan, their premium may actually go down versus the HMO premium. So if you look, they're currently paying $569. If they take the small group HMO, it was $658, so it went up pretty drastically. But if they take the PPO plan, the premium would go down based on their current mid-market premium. But they'd be losing those provider doctors if this doesn't change prior to the renewal. But it does look like that is going to be coming into place. With underwriting, believe it or not, small group underwriting is actually faster than large group underwriting. We can get a group approved with most of our medical carriers right now in a day or two. And some of those carriers actually include medical ID numbers with that approval. So it's faster than the two to three week processing time going to large group carriers. So that's good news. And as I already alluded to, with small group, the carriers in small group are more lenient alongside Kaiser nowadays. So you can see the rules here, but I'll make it short and simple. The best carrier alongside Kaiser right now happens to be United Healthcare. If you look, it does say a 60% participation, but they actually count the Kaiser members towards the 60%. They also view individual waivers on or off the exchange as a valid waiver, so it's pretty hard not to meet that participation alongside Kaiser. So you can have a group of 100 full-time equivalents, five do not want Kaiser, and 95 want Kaiser, and that group is totally legitimate. You can write that with United Healthcare, no problem. United would take the five, and Kaiser would get the 95 employees. Uh, CalChoice, of course, is always the most flexible. They don't have a minimum number they need. Kaiser is in the portfolio. You know that within CalChoice small group now, that we don't have that huge rate differential we had back in the day, 10 to 15% between Kaiser Direct and Kaiser within CalChoice. So that's good news, and the premium difference is only about two points. And the other carriers are getting flexible as well. You can see they go down to 50% alongside Kaiser, sometimes 30%. Now I will be, um, you know, remind you that, yes, small group underwriting is more tedious. So we do need applications from everyone, whether enrolling or declining, including for the, the dependents. So we do need that prior to approval. So it's a little different than large group where you can just get the majority of the apps and go ahead and get approval, and the person on vacation can send an app when they get back. Small group, we have to have everything, I's dotted, T's crossed, when we get the approval with small group carriers. We do need the DE9C, legal docs if the owners are not on the DE9C, and payroll for new hires. There's asterisks by those three because currently Aetna, Anthem, and UHC, depending on the group size, don't need those items. CalChoice and HealthNet do and the three carriers there at the bottom do if the group is small, really small, like under five or ten lives with United. Quick reminder, the good news with um, mid-market groups moving to small group is there is a rule with small group per ACA where all the carriers have to offer a special open window one time a year. So think of the groups that are not meeting participation for whatever reason. Those groups, that AU Life group that is not meeting your participation right now, could enroll with any carrier 
between November 15 and December 15 for January 1st effective date and they do not have to meet the carrier's current participation rules. So uh, just keep that in the back of your head for your mid-market groups that maybe you've kept with their carrier for years because you knew you couldn't move them anywhere else because of participation alongside Kaiser or for whatever reason. Now the rates are the big topic when moving from composite rates to small group 1 to 100 community rates and if you're not familiar in California we have 19 rating regions. All the carriers use the exact same rating regions so there's not a difference like there used to be. With the rate factors the rates are determined by age of each family member. So back in the day we only wanted the a date of birth for the employee but now we actually need the date of birth for all family members including spouses and all kids. There is a limit on how many kids that you'll be charged for. So you're only charged for the first three kids under the age of 20. So if you have a family four, you're charged for the first three. The fourth child is uh, free, per se, until the oldest child turns 21. And at that point, you now have one child over 21. And then that, the youngest child that was free is now part of your three maximum under 20. There is a maximum of rate of one to three that the carriers can charge. So that's the biggest difference bringing the younger employees up higher rates because there can't be a variable of more than one to three between the youngest rate and the oldest rate. It did get simpler recently where all the carriers now do use the employer zip code for determining rates. So you don't necessarily need the employee zip codes to determine the rates for where they live, but you do need the employee zip codes to determine plan availability. So the biggest change for these mid-market groups is the groups that are very healthy that have been getting good discounts with their mid-market carrier and or groups that get discounts for their SIC, when they move to small group, they might see a bigger rate increase than a group otherwise that was on the other end of that where they weren't healthy and they were getting dinged by the mid-market carrier. Those groups actually are going to like small group community rating. Same thing if they were in an SIC code that wasn't attractive in mid-market, you can't rate by SIC code in small group anymore. So those groups are going to like community rating. Now if you have a group that has a lot of college age children, those groups are going to have big increases when they move from mid-market to small group because again every employee or child rather over the age of 20 becomes their own independent premium and it almost looks like you have you know, two or three spouses on the plan with you. It has a huge impact on the premiums. So the young employees may ex experience rate decreases, which is different than what we were seeing when the regular small group went to ACA small group because those rates were going up. What we've seen in mid-market groups going to small groups is those young employees have been subsidizing those older employees in composite rates for years. So when you break them out, they actually their rates might go down. So let's get to the heart of the conversation today, which is the composite rate options. So there's three options we're going to present. So the first one is Trinet, then Anthem's Balanced Funding, UHC's ACEC, which is an engineering trust. This is an example of rates, of community rates are in the green in the middle, composite rates on the right. So if you have example A, this is showing you that you've got a husband and wife and four children, but you'll see, I'm sorry, five children, but you'll see that the youngest two children are actually free because you're only charged for the oldest three under the age of 20. That gets you in the community arena $1,819 for premium. The composite rate for that same family in the mid-market scenario was $1,941. So actually the community rating possibly is, is lower there. However, once those older children turn 21, you'll see an example B, that it has a huge impact. So now this premium went from 1819 to 2622 for the exact same family that's now just older versus a composite rates in 1941. So think of the, again, think of those groups that have a lot of overage dependents and they're not going to be very happy with the community rating and small group. So the three options again are Trinet, excuse me, Anthem Balance Funding and ACEC through UHC. The first one we're going to discuss is Trinet. It is a broker-friendly PEO. The number one thing you're going to want to know is that you get composite rates down to a group of one lives. So your 20 life group can move to Trinet and get composite rates versus community rate rates. We've done a lot of examples of 
community rates for different groups against a Trinet quote, and for the most part, it is very competitive when you go to Trinet. Now, you have to understand, you get a lot of services when you go to Trinet, so they, they charge an admin fee per employee per month, but you get a lot of items for that. So when you just look at medical to medical, the medical for Trinet is typically less than if you go to community rates through small group with any carrier. You do have to consider the admin fee, which again can look like a lot. It averages $120 per employee per month, but we'll review everything you get for that admin fee. Trinet has been running very well for the past 10 years. They've had single-digit renewals. I can't promise that forever, but just to know, it seems like a very steady pool. The admin fee that I was just discussing, to write, reminder of some of the items you get for that, are the payroll, online enrollments, which is a hot topic nowadays, and HR call center, compliance, et cetera, et cetera. Trinet has never done uh, tax restarts when you move a group from their own company over to Trinet and start leasing those employees. Other PEOs did, and now there's a new rule coming down that you can't, but that's Trinet um, has always been doing that. Another big item of why a group might consider moving from their own insurance over to Trinet, the PEO, is because you get really rich plan designs. We talked about with small group, they've got those metallic restrictions, they've got out-of-pocket maxes that are very high nowadays, etc. If you have a white collar group in particular that's looking for rich benefits, the small group market might not have the plan designs they want, but if you move them to Trinet, that is an option for them. Trinet does give medical deductible credit when you move over to Trinet, so that's great. And they do have different portfolios for white collar and blue collar, which we'll touch on quickly. With commissions for you guys, it's very important to understand that how you get paid when you move a group from Trinet or to Trinet. So you will get paid 6.5% for the Blue Shield medical premium. Now Blue Shield Direct just decreased their premium or commission from 6.5% to 5%. They have not done that in Trinet. Can't say it'll always be 6.5%, but it looks like it's going to be like that for a while now. So you will get paid higher commission for Blue Shield business through Trinet versus going direct. You do only get paid on Blue Shield commission, however, so if the group is heavy on Kaiser, it's probably not going to look attractive to you as a broker to move the group to Trinet. You also, in addition to the Blue Shield medical commission, you also get a percentage of the PEO admin fee, which, as I said, is typically averages $120 per employee per month. So that's an additional $18 per employee per month commission to you, the broker, on top of Blue Shield's medical 6.5%. And then in addition to that, the first year you move them over, there is a setup fee for the group, and you get paid 25% of that. So the average setup fee for a group is $3,000. So that would equate to another $750. Now that would be for the first year only. One nice thing when you're prospecting is that Trinet actually only issues one quote to the first broker that requests one. So it's like the PNC market, where the first broker that requests a quote blocks out the rest of the market. And then when you're with Trinet, you are the broker record forever. They cannot take you off of it. So that is your group forever, once, as long as the group stays within Trinet. Here's an example of some premiums. So we took a group, 21 employees, and we quoted it alongside Anthem, Blue Shield, HealthNet, and United Direct against a Trinet Blue Shield comparable medical plan. And you will see the monthly cost for Anthem is about $14,300. Shield is $15,400, HealthNet is $15,684, and the United is the $13,800. Compared to Trinet, similar Blue Shield plan of $12,800. So the Trinet Blue Shield comparable medical plan is actually cheaper than all the other medical community rate plans that we looked at for the sample group. You do have to add that admin fee though, which is about $2,800 per month for this group. So the total the premium plus the admin fee is $15,718, which puts you right around you know, Blue Shield and HealthNet, just the medical premium alone. But remember everything you get for that admin fee, which is you know, payroll, HR services, ACA compliance, an online tool, et cetera, et cetera. For you, the broker, now that almost everyone is at 5% commission, except for United still paying 6.5%, what this group would pay you for the first year commission is 8,500, 9,200, 9,400, or 10,700 with United compared to 
Blue Shield 6.5% through Trinet, and you're getting $15,151. That is including the admin fee of 15% of the admin fee here. So the total commission to you guys, you actually get paid more when you sell the group through Trinet. Again, if the group is heavy Kaiser, it's not going to be an attractive group for you, but still might work for the, the client. So what you should consider quoting for Trinet. Groups that are new, they're high growth, they're doing well, they're running their business, but they're not very good. They're good with their product per se or their service, but they're not very good with running a business. They're hiring so fast, they can't keep up with the paperwork, et cetera. Those are the perfect groups for Trinet. Also groups that have more out of state than in California, Trinet's a great fit for those guys. You can also think of the groups in your book that are really in need of real good HR and ACA compliance. They don't know what they're doing. They really need a professional outside source that can just take care of that for them because they're either an HR nightmare or ACA compliance, you know, very complex. So these are the groups that you really want to focus on sending into Trinet. Trinet will not be a great fit for every group. This, these are the groups that make sense. Now, remember the benefits and value that you get through Trinet is a quick reminder, they're broker friendly. You know, ADP and paychecks are, are very competitive out there, but they're not paying brokers anything. They do consolidate everything, so it makes it easier for the group to just make their service or, and provide their, or do, provide their service or make their product, et cetera, and let the business aspect of it be taken care of by professionals. The HR, the payroll, benefits, compliance, all wrapped up together for that admin fee. And then you can, can probably relate to all the issues we've had with medical lately, with eligibility issue, billing issues, et cetera. When you're using the online system and it's all tracked together, there's a lot less eligibility billing errors, errors that take time off your plate of selling new business. So it's just a lot more efficient going through Trinet versus doing everything on itself. Large group style plans, as I mentioned. So again, a white collar group that's trying to attract and retain talent, you can bring something to the table that another broker can't, which is the regular small group community rating plan designs. ACA compliance and reporting, so they'll do the, the 1095s and 1094 plan, uh, documents that are required every year for certain groups. And then they've got a great technology platform that includes online enrollment, the hot topic of the day. Moving on to the second, composite rates option is Anthem's balanced funding product. Now, I do want to point out that Anthem has two pools. They've got the 100 plus and they've got a 20 to 100 pool for the Anthem balanced funding. I'm speaking to the 20 to 100 pool through Anthem. So again, the big beauty of Anthem balanced funding versus going small group community rates is you get composite rates down to a group of 20 enrolls. There's a fixed monthly payment, so Anthem Balance Funding is similar to Cygnus Level Funded Product. It's the best of both worlds. So it has a fixed monthly payment similar to a fully insured product, but it has a cap on financial responsibility. So you're not going to have huge risk versus like a fully insured product, which you never really want to do under a 100 Life Group. The plan designs offered, there's 27 plans for the Anthem Balance Funding Product. It's all PPO based. So you see the 15 PPOs, 6 EPOs, 6 HSAs, and they do allow dual PPO networks available within Anthem Balance Funding. Commissions is something to consider. It does appear pretty low. It's $25 per contract per month, which means per member, not per, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it is per member, not per employee. That is negotiable, however. So as a result, if you want to increase it to 26 or 27, you can just realize that your premium is going to increase at the same time. So groups that will be attractive for the Anthem Balance Funding product are groups that are healthy, obviously, because um, you're put in with a level-funded product. So think of the groups that were getting good discounts with their mid-market carriers, and now they're going small group. Consider Anthem Balance Funding. Send in the quote. It takes a day or so. We'll send it back to you, and you can see if it's attractive or not. In reality, the first premiums you see are going to look similar to what you're quoting in the normal community rating portfolio. It's not going to look extremely attractive um, compared to what they could get elsewhere. However, the big benefit, if they're healthy, is that they're going to get the premium refunds the second year going forward. If there's a lot of Kaiser, just be aware that's 50% alongside Kaiser. So the benefit of Anthem Balance Funding 
are you do have that stop loss protection. So if the group you know thought they were healthy, like they all think they're healthy, right? Um, turns out they're not. Then you do have protection. You're not going to have huge stop loss or um, out of pocket costs like you would with a fully insured product. I'm sorry, a self insured product. You will have lower claims because you get the premium credits if they're healthy, of course. There is a run out which is pre-funded, so you're not going to have huge terminal loss reserves to pay when they decide to leave, if they want to leave. Another item with Anthem Balance Funding that's unique is you eliminate the ACA premium taxes. So that saves you, what, about 5% of premium that you'd be paying if you go to community rating on the small group market. Unlike Cigna, they currently do not require any health statements. We've had several groups that have gone down the Cigna level funded product. They fill out those health statements per employee. They find out that they're not as healthy as they thought they were, and then Cigna declines them at the last minute, and then the group is scrambling for a new home. Also, if a group likes having some control or knowledge over their employee base, you do get monthly reports over with the information from Anthem Balance Funding, so that's attractive to a lot of groups that are wellness-based or just interested in, in, in the real cost. Moving to the last composite rating options, we have ACEC, which is through UHC, and it's an engineering trust. So this is only going to work for groups that are specifically have engineers. Again, it's a composite rate option. That's why we're talking about it. What's unique about UHC's ACEC product is that it's actually quoted out of Illinois. Well, we're in California, which means the groups 51 plus, you're probably going to see 20% discount on what you're going to get in the California premium market because it's based out of Illinois, not California. And they've got great discounted ancillary and bundled discounts through UHC if you buy multiple lines of coverage. Just like the other two products we discussed, you do get large group plan designs so they can be richer than the small group market. And commissions are 5%, which is very competitive against what else you're going to see direct through California's small group market. You do need to be licensed in Illinois, so if you don't already have an Illinois license, you will need to do that. So just keep that in the back of your head for the ACEC trust. Now, again, it's only going to work for engineering companies, and they do have to have one professional engineer on staff. So that is the requirement. If they're not already part of the ACEC Engineering Trust, which I, I hear is very large anyway, they would need to join in order to buy the UHC product. The benefits of ACEC are it's very consistent. Once they go there, they typically stay, which is what you guys are looking for, a good, solid product. You're not looking to move your group every year. You want to go off and find more business. And then they do, UHC's great. They have so many tools, uh, direct or through UHC's ACECs, where they have advocacy programs that helps mitigate costs down the road, a lot of tools and a lot of wellness programs for members to use to, to get medical costs under control. So now I'm going to jump out and talk about renewals just in general for groups moving from large group to small group in 2016. It may or may not be 2016. So you'll see that California Choice and Health, as a reminder, allowed groups to early renew last year in 2015 up until December 2016. So those groups will be coming up at the same time as 80% of the small group market. And then we had carriers like Aetna, Anthem, and UHC that allowed groups to early renew last year all the way through January 2017. So that gives you a, a little breather on all the December business that's happening all at once. But all those mid-market groups are going to have, the 51 to 100 life groups rather, are going to have to go to a different home. With um, changing anniversary dates, we get this question all the time. All of our carriers will allow you to change your anniversary date. Just realize that you're going to get new rates and benefits when you actually make the move. Now, Anthem and UHC, small group market, were unique. Um, UHC still is. Anthem might not be so after July, where the 2016 rates were actually less expensive than the December 2015 rates. So it made a lot of sense to move those groups off December to a different date. So the same thing applies for these mid-market groups that all moved to December at 2015 renewal dates. When they come up, they might not want to stick with that date. Just keep them back in your mind that you can change their anniversary date any time. It's more just a process. But you get the rates and benefits at the time of the move. And then do realize what that means on deductibles and out-of-pocket maxes. If they move to January, you know, you never get credit for the month of January, etc. So the renewal process, just real quick guidelines. So all the carriers have turned the renewal process 
into more of an internal process, which is nice because back in the day, if you move from Anthem large group or Cal Choice large group, they, I'm sorry, Anthem large group to small group, Anthem, they would make you fill out all new forms, new binder check everything. It was almost like moving from a different carrier even though it was still Anthem. So as I indicated earlier, all of the carriers have these forms that they're sending out ahead of time and they're asking the employer, how large are you based on the new definition of full-time equivalents? Whatever they indicate on that form is the renewal segment that they're going to receive the renewal from. So if you have an 80 life group that really has 110 full-time equivalents and they say they have 110 full-time equivalents, they will get a large group renewal from the carrier they're currently with. All renewals have to be sent 60 days in advance. I do believe the carriers will try to send those out as early as possible, however. This is a big transition for everyone. For the most part, you'll see that all the carriers are you know, sending out normal mapping plan designs at renewal. Anthems proactively reach out to brokers to try to find out what's more important to the group. You know, do they want to keep a full network? Is cost more important to them, et cetera? And then they'll map to the plans based on that conversation. Same thing with United Healthcare. The renewal rep is going to be reaching out, trying to discuss which renewal plans make the most sense for this group when the renewal comes up. Um, there's not a lot of paperwork. Again, all the carriers try to make it a simple transition from large group to small group for the most part. So for the most part, nothing is required from the carriers if you just accept the map renewal plans. You don't have to accept the MAP renewal plans. At that point, there will be documentation because you'll need to communicate to the carrier which plans the members want. There has been a change with small group for some of the carriers. Back in the day, not all the carriers had account managers for small groups. Now you'll see that everyone in small group is finding account managers if they didn't before for the mid-market segment, really trying to provide that service that these mid-market groups are used to. Commissions, just a reminder, in small group, um, it's typically, if you look on here, is now the market trend is a flat 5%. CalChoice, however, still pays you 6.5% for groups under 50, but those 51 and 100 enrolled groups should get 5%. Same thing with United, it's two different segments. Groups under 50 at 6.5%, downgrades to 6 and holds there. And then with the mid-market groups, it starts at 5%, downgrades to 4 So what we're out there mentioning to brokers is start prepping now. If you don't already have a community census for your mid-market 51 to 100 groups, please reach out and start getting those. We do have a census collection tool that can help you with that, which I'll talk about in a second. Go ahead and run the ACA community rates now. You know, some of the carriers' rates are probably going to hold till the end of the year, or they might go down, et cetera. But if you take your 80 life group that you have in the books with a large group carrier, go ahead and quote them on community rates now. You can get a feel of the impact. Is this a group that has a lot of overage dependents that's going to get hit pretty hard? Is it a group that wasn't very attractive from large group carriers, and so they're going to like the community rates, et cetera? Helps manage your blog and set expectations with the group. Evaluate the rates, obviously. Look at those. <coughs> Look at those ACA, ACA rates or the composite rate options we just discussed through Trinet, Anthem Balance Funding, or the United Healthcare ACEC Trust. And then, you know, trying to make your life simple. We have free online enrollment for any size group down to one life. So when you sell a new case with us, just tell us what you sold. We'll do the work. We'll get the online enrollment system up and running in a day. The employees will then go online, select their benefits and rates that they want for the new year, fill out the application, digitally sign it, and they're done. This, especially since everything happens at once now, and it's extremely difficult in the fourth quarter for the carriers to process everything, if you use our free online enrollment system, then it will make sure things get complete because we can track, we can tell you how many employees have actually gone in and completed or not. We can extend it if we need to. When we get it, everything's going to be complete versus an application where a line might have been missed, and then everything will be legible as well. We're not going to be guessing on any information which, you know, is it a six or a nine, et cetera, based on bad handwriting. With BP Census, so this is our census collection tool if you need it for those mid-market groups or say a prospect for your, you know, groups under 52. It's quick and simple. You just register for it. Then each employee gets a quick email. It doesn't require a lot of data for the employee to complete because we don't need a lot of 
data form. It's not like online enrollment. We just need to know the dates of birth for all the family members based on the community rates as well as um, the home zip code to make sure the plan availability is correct. With BP Enroll, I already discussed that. That's a free online enrollment. You know, we really want to try to encourage that. Again, it's free down a One Life group. Um, the group doesn't have to use anything going forward after that. It just helps that initial enrollment when you're moving carriers to make sure that things are more complete, done quickly, accurately, and legible. All right, so at that point, I think I'll stop and see if we have any questions. We do have some questions. So um, I decided to save them until the end. You had a good pace going, so I didn't really want to interrupt. Now, um, can we, if we step back to the special open enrollment, are, do you know, can you speak to how the carriers are, you know, renewing those groups? Are they guaranteeing renewal or not? So every year we go out to the carriers and ask that same question. It's been pretty consistent where I believe it's just United Healthcare has been the only carrier that says, yes, we have to take them the first year, but we do not have to enroll them. But we will reach out closer to uh, the fourth quarter and see United Healthcare stance at this point in time. The other carriers like Aetna and Anthem were stating, no, if we take them that through the special open window, we're going to keep them that way. And we also do have um, on our website, on the underwriting pages of our website, we do have the special open enrollment comparison for 2015 that does lay out all the rules that were in effect then. And that is the document that we will, you know, review with the carriers and then update for 2016 as, as soon as we know their position. Now, um, getting back to the questions on... Um, as far as the UHC's ACEC, the minimum number of engineers, again, can you speak to that? Yes, the product goes down to one life groups and you only need one professional engineer on staff. So it can be a 90 life group with just one professional engineer, that is fine. But they do have to be part of the association if they aren't already. Um, can you speak to the ACEC fees, um, you know, and the criteria, you know, if groups need to join? I have some information I can send out to the person specifically asking that question. It's, um, you know, when we've looked at it before, the premium savings, because again, a mid-market group, that well, I keep saying mid-market, but I mean 51 to 100 life groups, the premium difference is, is so much more attractive because it's based in Illinois that the association fee is really nominal and is wiped out by the premium savings on the medical plan. Okay, thank you. Um, also on minimum number of employees, uh, how many are required for Anthem's balance funding? You have to have 20 enrolled with Anthem Balance Funding. So Trinet and UHC's product go down on one life group, but Anthem is specifically at 20 enrolled, not eligible. Now, um, sorry, to well, somebody just um, wanted to clarify if there was a minimum number of employees for the UHC Trust. You said they will write down to one, correct? And that one employee would have to be an engineer. Correct, exactly. Okay, thank you. Can you speak to Trinet, um, specific to Trinet and PEOs? So some PEOs, I guess, are not doing the ACA reporting for their clients. Do you know if um, how Trinet is handling that? Yes, that's a big selling point for Trinet is they are doing the reporting. Um, so that's what we're saying. If, if you have a complicated group that the ACA reporting is very complex, it would make a lot of sense to look at Trinet for that reason alone because they will do the tracking and the actual reporting for those forms.
Okay, thank you. Sorry, I was just looking at uh, questions real quickly. From the three composite rate options that you presented, Trinet, the UHC Engineering Trust, and then Anthem Balance Funding, um, which option would be best for groups that have over 51% out of state? That would be um, Trinet for sure, not Anthem at all, and then possibly UHC because it's written out of Illinois. I would have to check the out-of-state participation with the, the UHC ACEC trust, but Trinet would be definitely a great fit and the Anthem wouldn't work at all. Okay, I do have a couple more questions regarding um, Trinet. So, do um, can a group actually be turned down or not quoted um, due to their industry? Yes, Trinet does have a list of industries that they're not looking for, and we can actually share that list with whoever asks the question. And I would throw out there that, you know, when you are looking at Trinet, it's a large group quote process. And think of all the lines of coverage that they're quoting. They're also going to be taking over the group's payroll, et cetera. So it is a more you know, complex quoting process, and it does take five days or longer, depending on the, the time frame within the year. But look at all the lines that they're actually quoting, et cetera. It's not like a small group quote we can go on and quote in 10 minutes. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind. It's very similar to what you're used to in large group arena, um, the old large group arena but I just did want to add that. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned that because that was actually one of the, the other questions I that has been presented in regard to Trinet was what is the information that's required, you know, in order to, to obtain that quote. So if you do, cons you know, think of it as a large group quote process, it's very similar to that. Um, we will need payroll information, you know, you need to provide current rates, benefits, et cetera. There are a couple products that you can um, carve out of Trinet, and really that just comes down to the workers' comp and the 401k if you don't want to include it in the package. But other than that, you know, if we're including workers' comp, then we're going to need the workers' comp information, et cetera. But for the most part, when we're looking at it, we consider it like the large group process, but there is information and as always, the more complete we get it the first time because there's a longer process, then the faster we can get the quote back. Versus if we, you know, we send it out and it's not complete, you know, expect it to be longer than the five days. The five days is going to start from the time you actually get the complete submission. Okay, give me just one moment, Jennifer. I want to just kind of scan these real quick. It looks like, I mean, we've addressed the, the majority. There, there may be some questions that you have presented specific to, um, that are um, group specific, and we can follow up with you. We will have all of these questions available. And, and especially if you um, are interested in more information on Trinet, we do have a booklet that we can provide to you, you know, that really just kind of, you know, to the point, the pros and cons with some benefit and, and rate comparisons as well as, you know, commission examples, you know, that you can see. And, you know, I know that our sales reps are also scheduling um, joint meetings with our broker partners and a Trinet sales rep, you know, to get more information to better understand the relationship with Trinet as well as, you know, how to enter um, more intelligence on other PEOs and, and competitors. So I, I do want to, you know, recommend that you reach out to your, to your sales rep and they will be able to help you with that as well. And Stacy, while you're looking at those questions, I would just like to throw in, you know, in summary on the three composite rates, you have the you know, ACEC, the Engineering Trust with United, is obviously a niche. If it's not an engineering company, then that's not going to work for the group. Anthem Balance Funding is, is going to be specific to those groups that you really do know are healthy because, you know, year one, the premium is going to be similar to what you're going to get just on the direct market. It's year two and three going forward where they can actually get up to two-thirds of the premium refunded because their claims have been running well. 
And you can always try it, and if you, you thought the group was healthy but they're not, then when you leave, there's no huge terminal reserve you have to pay out. Trying it is probably the, the bigger global picture uh, that will work for more larger groups. Um, and again, that looks for, I meant larger as meaning uh, more groups might be attracted to Trinet versus the other two options we discussed today because there's a lot of fits for Trinet. One, that fast-growing group, um, that group that needs help with ACA compliance, that group that needs help with HR, that group that is, you know, needing to attract and retain employees. They look like a bigger firm, richer plan designs, you know, better systems, et cetera. So Trinet will probably, it's not right for everybody, it'll probably fit more groups than the Anthem Balance funding, which is really unique to healthy groups, true healthy groups. And then Engineering Trust obviously only works for engineering firms. But we wanted to present these options today to make sure that you have, you're aware of them for one, because they are out in the marketplace. You never want to get blindsided by, oh, this other broker presented this, what's this about? And prospecting, you know, it's always nice to have something new to talk about and to bring something to the table. And there are, you know, good fits for certain groups. So you do want to make sure you're doing your homework and you present the right information for the groups. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. I So after looking through the questions, um, you know, answers um, are have been presented to the bulk of the questions unless they are group specific and you will receive tomorrow a follow-up email that will list uh, include the presentation slides as well as a recording and so you can find answers within the presentation as well as listening to the recording and we will include some additional information on the three composite rate options that Jennifer spoke to about today as well. All right, thank you very much for attending today. We really appreciate your time. Just listen if you have any additional questions. And again, we can come out and talk more in detail about all these options and give you general updates with all the carriers. And enjoy the next couple months because it's going to be probably your only time. We're all talking about it's going to be fourth quarter before we realize it. So enjoy it. Let us know how we can help you and definitely here to help you in the fourth quarter in the madness. We appreciate your time and your business. Take care.